Thank you, guys. Steve, you can go ahead and hit it. When was the last time you felt vulnerable? Really vulnerable. Perhaps like me, you were skiing at Bridger and were pulling your head out of a snowdrift, wondering how your skis and poles got into this pattern. But perhaps you were finding out that a loved one was in a car accident, or that you and a loved one were sick. For many of the patients that I meet and treat every day, that moment of vulnerability comes when they no longer see the world as clearly as they once did. The places they love, and more importantly, the faces of those they love, have faded into darkness. Worldwide, over 39 million people live in darkness and blindness. We could fill over 100,000 Ellen theaters with blind people. In the United States, 1.3 million people are blind. And in Montana, just under 22,000 people are blind. Globally, 80% of blindness is preventable by cost-effective measures such as screening and treatment. People like Pimba, who had never seen his grandson, can be granted that opportunity if the infrastructure, training, and support are developed. In my time in Nepal, I witnessed firsthand the toll of blindness. Patients routinely show up at the Toganga Eye Institute at five in the morning in hopes of being one of the first 500 patients to be seen, even if it means they have to wait 12 hours to be seen. It makes me feel really good about my wait times. Globally, a great portion of blindness is caused by cataracts, which is a clouding of the focusing lens of the eye. But today I'd like to talk about the cornea, which is the clear front window of the eye. When the cornea becomes damaged, it becomes cloudy or opaque. And in that situation, we need a donor cornea, like the one seen here in its storage media, to help a patient see better. What's so unique about the cornea in the world of transplantation is its lack of blood supply. For this reason, corneas have an immunologically protected region and don't need to be matched by blood type or HLA type. Corneas are procured, screened, tested, and sent to surgeons from eye banks across the world. This is a full thickness transplant where we use tiny stitches to reattach a donor cornea. We can also do a partial thickness transplant where we transplant just the very inside layer of the cornea. These donors, like the one pictured here, are transported, rolled up like a soft taco, and then we insert them into the eye. They're approximately 15 microns thick, which is about seven times thinner than a piece of paper. This is an eye that had a partial thickness corneal transplant, and you'd likely never know unless you were looking at this patient's eye under a microscope. What's so unique about corneas is because of the storage media we keep them in after they're uh, procured, we can send them anywhere in the world and still effectively use them two weeks later, 8,000 miles away. For the miracle of transplantation to occur, yes, it takes a patient, and yes, it takes a surgeon, but most importantly, it takes a person with the capacity to leave this world with a gift of love. It takes a donor. A word about donation. One donor has the opportunity to give life to eight people through organ donation. They have the opportunity to give sight to two people. They have the opportunity to heal over 70 people through tissue donation. What many people don't realize about organ and tissue donation is that ultimately the decision to donate life rests in your loved one's hands when you pass away. Despite me putting donate on my driver's license, my wife and children will ultimately decide what happens to my body after I pass away. I tell you this because it's important that we talk to our loved ones. I say everyone faces these three metaphoric Nepalese doors when it comes to organ and tissue donation. No, I don't want to donate. Yes, I do want to donate. Or yes, I do want to donate. And yes, I've talked to my loved ones about that decision. As you consider that decision, I'd ask you to ponder a few things. Take time to put yourself in the shoes of others. What if you were sitting in that waiting room nervously? 
what if you were in an exam room or a loved one was in an exam room giving news about a disease that you didn't want to know about? What if you couldn't see the mystical 20 buffalo on the Montana eye chart? <laughs> if you've been to previous PKs, what if you were on disability and had to go di to dialysis three days a week? Or what if your heart was failing or your lungs were failing or your liver was failing? What if you had the opportunity to grant freedom to not only this father and to this grandfather, but also to their son and grandson, whose job is, it is to guide them through the world instead of bettering his future through school? That is a powerful and emotional opportunity. I want you to take a minute and look to the person to your left or to your right. You get to choose. I want you to remember their eyes and their smile. I want you to remember their sweet Montana beard, if they're sporting one, or Jeff's sweet mustache that he was sporting in some of his pictures. Now, how long could you hold on to that memory? How devastated would you be if your slides froze? It would be very sad, but it would allow you to hold on to that memory much longer. Maybe you wouldn't care if their face faded because maybe you're sitting next to a, a total stranger. But, but what if it was a friend? Or if, what if you're sitting by a loved one? Or a hopefully future possible loved one? Or your kids? This message from a patient who received two corneas says it best. We all have the capacity to give the gift of life, to give the gift of sight, and to give the gift of love. I would ask that you consider donation and talk to your loved ones about that decision. Thank you.